How long has it been since I took a look at a smartwatch? Actually, no, seriously, how long? Damn, 13th of October 2019. <laughs> That's more than a year. <laughs> well, that aside, I've got a new smartwatch that I'm going to be taking a look at today. The MS Fit X, right here. And I picked this guy up over at Indiegogo when I backed their crowdfunding because... Well, I think it looks kind of cool, or at least the promo images did. So now that I have it here with me and, you know, I've used it for a couple of weeks, I've got some thoughts on this guy that I think that you should know. So with that said, let's get into the review of the MS FedEx smartwatch. The watch comes in this nice little cloth pouch and normally I call this the unboxing portion of the video, but this isn't a box now, is it? <laughs> well. No, I think it's more like an uncylindering, and so to get our cylinder open, we flip it around, cut the tape, twist it, and lift it off. First up is of course the MS Fit X itself, and if you also twist and lift this section off, below that it's a shorter strap for smaller hands, and if you look even further below that, you'll find the manuals. Now at this point you may be wondering like, wait a minute, where's the charger? Well, if you look at the top where the watch is and flip it over, you see a little box. And if you open that up, you'll find what is actually a USB cable that is connected to the top. <laughs> yes, the top itself is the charger. You can, of course, remove the charging puck from the base itself, but you probably won't want to because the packaging actually doubles as a charging dock of sorts. And I think that's pretty cool because the packaging itself looks pretty cool and it's a smart way to add functionality into the packaging. Just like the GTS, most of the specs of the MS Fit X is undisclosed, so I can't really run through any of them. But I'm pretty sure that most of you probably don't care because you're just here for that stunning 2.07 inch curved AMOLED display. Other specs include Bluetooth 5, GPS, GLONASS, a heart rate sensor, oxygen level sensor, and an ambient light sensor. And oh, there's a waterproofing up to 5 atmosphere. You'd be forgiven if you thought that the MS Fit X was a smart band rather than a smartwatch just because of how it looks. The body is made of titanium alloy with floral rubber straps and the model that I have here with me is the Obsidian Black but you can also get it in New Moon Gold which is a fancy way of saying white and gold. If you're looking for a power button on the watch, you won't find any as there are no buttons on the watch itself but there is a squeeze sensor to turn on and off the display. The star of the shoulder screen is a curved AMOLED with the glass itself being Gorilla Glass 3 and forged at over 700 degrees Celsius, which is pretty insane. That display along with the body of the watch is curved at 92 degrees which MS Fit says conforms to the curvature of your arm, making it comfortable and it's got a 100% NTSC color accuracy with 400 nits of peak brightness. The tall display MS Fit claims allows you to view and access more information at any given time and while I can somewhat agree to this, I kinda don't like how thick the bezels are on the display. It definitely detracts from the whole futuristic view. I also don't know how I feel about this form factor as it really just feels more like a smart band to me than a smartwatch, but to each his own I guess. As of the production of this video, MS Fit has actually rebranded itself to Zep and so in order to pair the device to your phone, you're going to have to install the Zep app from the Play Store or App Store. From there, getting the watch set up is relatively easy. Sign in, tap on add a new device, add a watch and then either tap on scan the QR code or just scan for nearby device. Either way should work. Tap the tick to agree to pairing on the MS Fit X and you're done. I think that the one thing that I really like about MS Fit watches that I feel that Google's Wear OS could definitely learn from is the ability for me to do most of the customization for the watch on my phone. It's really a pain in the ass to have to set everything up on a smaller display going screen by screen so this is something that I really appreciate. Moving on to the watch's interface, if you've seen my MS Fit GTS video, you're welcome to skip this as it's pretty much the same. Swiping bottom up shows you any notifications, which if you start seeing a lot of question marks, it's not always that your contact is lost and confused, but rather the watch itself has trouble displaying emojis, and if you think that you're seeing duplicates, yes, the watch seems to have a problem with that. A top-down swipe gives you quick access shortcuts like find my phone, torch, battery saver, and do not disturb. 
left to right for widgets that you can kinda customize a little. Right to left shows you a list of apps like Workout which has 9 different workout profiles, activity go to see how you're doing, uh, heart rate, SpO2, stress detection, weather, schedule, alarm, settings and under more, stopwatch, countdown and music which controls the music player on your phone. So no built-in music player here. And finally, long press the watch face to change the, well, watch face. The one thing that I don't really like about this interface is how every screen transition is smooth except for the ones back to the home screen that are just this abrupt screen change which is really jarring. It's kind of weird, like why would they omit that? The app allows you to customize a lot of the watch on it with things like the watch face to change the watch faces with new ones appearing from time to time, unlock screen where you can set up your phone to unlock whenever your watch is nearby, uh, incoming call for incoming call alerts, schedule which is like a daily reminder, watch alarms sets alarms for your watch, uh, app alerts for sending watch notifications, you have to manually add in apps for it to work, idle alert lets you know that you have been stagnant for too long, Incoming SMS alerts, which is self-explanatory, and Go notifications, which should also be self-explanatory. You can also find your watch, which is kind of useless since the watch itself doesn't have a speaker and so it just vibrates. Discoverable for Bluetooth discoverability, activity heart rate sharing to share your heart rate with other devices, band location to set if you wear your watch on the left or right wrist, lift wrist to view info that should also be pretty self-explanatory aka have your watch wake up when you look at it, health monitoring for heart rate alerts, uh, sleep and stress monitoring, find phone ringtone to set the ringtone for when you use find my phone, and run in the background that is kinda important as it allows the application to run in the background so that you can receive notifications on your watch. Watch display settings allows you to trim down the app list on the watch even more, weather settings for the location and units, pairing restrictions for multiple device pairing, and finally, check for updates and firmware version. Coming from my thick watch E2, which is a Wear OS watch, the transition was bittersweet. On one hand, it's really nice to have a watch that can last as long as this watch does because with everything turned on, 24-hour uh, heart rate monitoring, notifications, and sleeping with it on for sleep tracking, the watch lasted a pretty respectable 72 hours, which is about 3 days of constant use, a massive difference over how long a Wear OS watch lasts. On the other hand though, I kinda hesitate to call this watch a smartwatch because I don't get the same kind of smart functionality that I can get with a Wear OS watch. There's no Google Assistant, I cannot reply to notifications straight from my watch, I cannot view my Google Calendar from this watch, and because of that it just really feels more like a fitness tracker or fashion piece, much like the uh, MS Fit GTS that I looked at before, and speaking of GTS, the MS Fit X feels in many ways like a GTS except in a different shape, which is to say that it doesn't really feel all that special using it. Anyway, let's say you had a couple of percent of battery left and you needed to top it off. Well, the charging dock is magnetic, it's really strong actually, and will get your watch from 0 to 100 in about 75 minutes. Pretty fast, not too bad, just enough time to grab a shower and some food before you head out for your day. Alright, let me bring things to a close with the MS Fit X, starting with the price. During the Indiegogo campaign that I backed, it costed 149 US dollars. At that price, yeah, you know what, it's not too bad, but that's the early bird price. It's currently going for 329 US dollars. Even then, it's sold out already, and I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. This watch is cool, but I don't think that it's worth that kind of money. I say this because I really find this watch to be a fitness tracker more than a smartwatch as it lacks a lot of features that you can get from competing Wear OS devices or maybe ones from Samsung with their Tizen and things like that. And on that note, compared to the much cheaper GTS, it really doesn't bring anything new to the table apart from the curved display and so unless you really like that you know, display and don't mind a smartwatch that is really more health tracker smart band, honestly, I would ask you to look elsewhere. Don't get me wrong, I like the MS Fit X because I think it looks <laughs> kinda cool and it has really long battery life and so if you got it for, you know, the same price that I got it at, at 150 US dollars, then I think that it's a pretty good deal, but at 330, I don't know if I can get behind that. 
Anyway, that's the end of the review. If you'd like to get one for yourself, then... Um, well, I have no idea where you can get one right now apart from Indiegogo and even that looks like it's out of stock. I'll put a link when I get one. <laughs> Do the usual YouTube thing of giving this video a like if you liked it, sharing it, dropping any comments down below, consider subscribing to me and if you're already subscribed, click the bell icon so that you don't miss any of my new and future videos as soon as they come out. <laughs> my name is Yang, the Tech Rodent, and mm, I really like smartwatches, but you know what, I think I'll wait for their big break for when they're really something that you can't live without. I'll see you guys around.